Hello, everybody. My name is Jimmy Smith, and welcome to the winewithjimmy.com sessions here on the WSET Level 3 certificate. Um, this is our first session of three on South Africa. Uh, so, this will look at the introduction to South Africa. Uh, it will then go into all things like climate, weather, topography. Uh, and then a bit on the wine laws, very minor part, but then we'll finish off the presentation looking at a working written question. So you will be able to understand what is likely to be asked of you if South Africa came up as one of the short written answer questions and how you should structure your answer to get full maximum marks so you are successful in that dreaded level three theory examination. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Jimmy. Um, if you uh, want to make any comments, questions or concerns, please pop them in the comments section below this video on YouTube or um, get in touch with us on social media. It's all at the bottom of every slide. You'll see there at Wine with Jimmy, at West London Wine, South London Wine and Streatham Winehouse. That's me, two wine schools that I own and my wine bar all in London in the United Kingdom. That's Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So South Africa is a really exciting country to get stuck into. I have been lucky enough to be go there frequently uh, for the last 10 years, and I've really discovered an amazing array of brilliant wines here in this country, which really has had some struggling times, uh, really due to political issues and social issues. But the country has really come out of it and like a phoenix from the flames has really emerged for its wine production in the last 20 to 30 years, specifically the last 10 years. There is some amazing, dynamic, diverse and really exciting wine being produced in this country, which we, we often laud as the, as the oldest new world country. And it does have uh, very long roots in wine production, all the way back to the first sort of Dutch settlers in the middle of the 17th century, eventually when wine pr was produced here in 1659 by a man called Jan van Riebeek. So we have a real extensive history of Dutch influence here, of um, a French by the Huguenots, and then British came through here a little bit as well. So wine really has been a staple part of South Africa on the Western Cape, and it's a very exciting place for it. So um, it looks like this. You often see beautiful uh, kind of arid landscape mixed with green vineyards and very breathtaking backdrops of mountains. And it's just wonderful like this. Uh, it's a very fantastic landscape. Okay, so we're going to look at the Western Cape then. So the Western Cape is, uh, as it's on this picture on the top right here, um, let me just get my point as you see it, this top right area here, the Western Cape is that real sort of southwesterly part of South Africa. And the Western Cape accounts for about 90% of South Africa's total production. So it's really all we'll focus on for your WSET level three syllabus. And um, here it is that uh, it's blown up on a grander scale. Cape Town is down here. So let me just get an identifying arrow here. Here we go. So Cape Town is down here, which is kind of uh, in terms of wine, the sort of spiritual hub, the city, which is overshadowed by the well-known and beautiful Table Mountain. Um, but then there are a whole host of wine regions that are dotted around the Western Cape, uh, which are split into a number of regions, which we'll talk a little bit about later for the wine laws. Um, you'll see here, uh, with this key at the top, the wine of origin coastal region is this kind of diagonal stripey box. And that is all this area here, including the Schwartland for you, um, Pal, Stellenbosch, Durbanville, Constantia. That's those kind of zones. You've also got the Cape South, which is down here, including Elgin and Walker Bay for you. And then the Breeder River Valley zone, which is places like Worcester, and Robertson for the WSET level three syllabus. Um, so this area, it looks um, not the largest, it is a part of a huge country, but this is an extensive place. Uh, it's quite wonderful, but we need to understand a few things about really the, um, the climate of this zone. So first and foremost, the location of latitude here 
is in fact between 27 degrees and 35 degrees south. Okay, so that means that you are, if you, if you, if you think about the, the kind of general rule of thumb for where vineyards lie for great quality wines, it's normally between 30 and 50, both north and south. Um, generalizing, there are some that lie out of that, and that's what we're about to learn here. We are partially in that area, but we're 27 to 35 degrees south, south, meaning closer towards the equator. So what does that mean? Well, straight off the bat, it's going to be too hot for the production of grapes if you just take into consideration its location with latitude. But of course, you know it's not as easy as that. It's not just about the latitude. There are many other things at play that can help moderate that extremely hot climate. And, and don't get me wrong, if you look really, and I'll, I'll change this to a red arrow, but if you look really at the hottest places, these inland zones like Tulbach, uh, which is actually quite moderated by the mountains, but parts of Worcester, for instance, parts of Robertson, towards Wellington, you know, some of these areas can be because they're inland and a bit more continental, can have regular days, many of them in summer above 30 degrees Celsius. And we're talking a lot and often above 40 degrees. And this is the issue for things like forest fires, which can be quite prevalent in this area. So yes, it's exceptionally hot. So what conditions are there in play to help moderate this very hot climate? And that's what we need to understand. First of all, which comes from the Southern Ocean, we have the Atlantic Ocean just here, the Indian Ocean and the Southern Ocean is off to the Southern part of this, what's quite often identified as the Southern Ocean. Okay, so we have a lot of oceanic effects. One of those is one that comes up from the South, just like this, okay. Uh, and this is what we call the Benguela Current. Okay, so let's pop that in down here, the Benguela. So the Benguela current. Now that comes from the Antarctic, so that's going to bring up very cold air, which helps moderate the places that it hits in uh, on the land first, which of course is your coastal zones. So that will be places like Walker Bay, Elgin, Stellenbosch, which is on False Bay, uh, things like Constantia, which is just to the east of Table Mountain, Durbanville, Schwartland, all of these areas are moderated by this Benguela current. That can sometimes be joined by a southeasterly wind. I'll do this in a slightly different color blue, um, but this is a southeasterly wind coming this way. Okay. And this is the wonderfully named Cape Doctor. Now, it's called Cape Doctor because it is said to chase away the maladies of the land, problems with rots and mildews and so on, because this wind will blow those away, away giving great air circulation. So Cape Doctor can often join the Benguela current, really adding to the cooling effect of the areas, really significantly affecting the Cape South Zone, Walker Bay, Hemelanada, and Elgin for you guys on the level three syllabus, the bits down at the bottom. So both of these combined are climatic effects which help moderate the very intensive heat that you can find in, in some parts of the Western Cape. Okay, so very important those two immediately to understand uh, and with the Benguela current, I would urge you to sort of think about it on the same sort of level as the Humboldt current that affects Chile. Uh, and that, that comes up from the Antarctic, that affects all of those coastal parts of Chile, the coastal mountain ranges. And that is what really balances out the climate and gives you a moderating effect. OK, so fine. But you will see across this Western Cape that not everything is coastal. So how on earth do you get great quality production here um, inland as well? And we really need to start talking about the topography of the landscape. Um, let me just quickly check to see if you've got everything you need to know here. Yes, you do. Great. Um, so the mountain ranges are the next things. Now, don't 
worry about this. You don't need to understand, uh, sorry, you don't need to recount the names of mountain ranges. You need to know that mountain ranges exist and they will affect the landscape. Okay, I've included this map because I want you to get an idea for the real expansive topography that we have here in the Western Cape. And we're talking expansive mountain ranges. Some of them are obviously on par with European, like the Alps and the Pyrenees, for instance, and others are smaller, but they are a huge effect in this area. And have a look, you have things like the Cedarberg. This is the area um, towards the kind of north of the Svartland, the Bolan Mountains affecting parts of things like um, Franschuk, Pal, Stellenbosch. Um, the Breeder River Valley is affected by some of those. The Langerberg, the Svartberg, which separates the Great Karoo and the Klein Karoo, the smaller Karoo. So there's an extensive amount here. So what do these mountain ranges do? So straight away, you can find mountain ranges hemming in a plateau. And what this could do is actually create real wonderful um, effects in that area, like a heat trap, and it can create a good microclimate in that middle area for really warming up the zone. Now that's not that imperative here, due to the fact that we're actually looking for mountain ranges for the opposite effect, for cooling effects. Because these mountain ranges can be so expansive, they can collect cold air and then that can be pushed down into the landscape around it, cooling down the vineyards which will be at the foothills of those mountain ranges. Uh, so you're talking not the highest altitude, but to 100 to 500 meters of altitude, but they will experience cooling mountain air mass, and that will um, give you a bit of a balancing effect in the local microclimate. Plus, they are mountains, so you've got altitude at play here. This will mean that grapes grown at higher altitudes will experience longer growing seasons, potentially more things like tannin and flavor profile, and higher acidities due to the fact that it's cooler. Um, also, you've got a variety of aspect, that's the direction of the slope. So you've got every point to the compass here in South Africa due to these massive expansive mountain ranges. So you can really um, start to locate vineyards that you need a benefit of. So here, often south facing is more beneficial because it's so hot and that will be the coolest side of the mountain. Okay, um, then the last thing really is the amount of geological influ influence that we have in this area. Such an expansive amount of mountain ranges and then all of the effect of big geological epochs, time over millions and millions of years, mean that we have the whole gambit of soils. That is um, igneous, like volcanic rocks. Uh, granite, for instance, is quite important here. Metamorphic rocks like schist, and then sedimentary rocks, things like uh, limestone and clays you'll find dotted around as well. It has everything, which means you really can cultivate um, a real diversity within each grape and then many grape varieties. So the mountains then, let's recap that. Ideal for a source of cool mountain air, ideal for altitude, for aspect, and then different geology, the soils. Okay, so that's a wonderful effect of the area. We um, now need to um, have a look at a, a bit of a, um, let's get this up here, a bit of a video, because I want to show you a video so you get a good feel. This is a Google Earth video, 3D, looking at um, the key parts that we've just been discussing. Um, so let's have a look at that. This is only a couple of minutes long. It's actually frozen on false bay at that moment. We're going to start our journey off looking at South Africa, including the little bit of Basutu land or Lesotho there in the top right. We're going into Cape Town, the kind of spiritual city really for wine. And we're going to go to Table Mountain, located just to the south of it, called Table Mountain because it's flat topped and it often has a mist on the top of it, which looks like a tablecloth. Um, now, just where this camera is at the minute is actually, and you'll see just appearing in the bottom left, are uh, the Constantia vineyards. Um, so some wonderful vineyards here, famous for Sauvignon Blanc, as they'll get the both a bit of a mountain effect, but also the coastal effect around that area. So that's a bit of a classic look. Now this is False Bay. So in the distance just there before the mountains 
is Stellenbosch, very famous area. But False Bay is a real area where the Benguela current plus the Cape Doctor severely affects this area, cooling it down. So Stellenbosch has quite a wonderful balanced climate. And to get an idea of mountain ranges, we have the Boland mountain range here with lots of little subsidiary mountains, which offers all of those things I mentioned previously in terms of cooler mounting air, aspect altitude soils, and heavily affecting areas like Pal, Stellenbosch, as you can see, he actually separates uh, on the left-hand side here, uh, uh, Stellenbosch and Pal, on the right will be places like um, uh, Worcester and Robertson, mainly Robertson. So, um, so you'll get a real effect for those mountain ranges. And this, you know, you see the vineyards in the distance there, but mountains are the beautiful backdrop of South Africa. Very, very important that you understand that. Uh, and back to South Africa again, they're overlooking. Um, oh, here's all of the videos. We have, remember, many videos on our channel that will help you get through your studies of WSET level three. Um, so the next thing that we are going to talk about is in fact the South African wine laws. So we've just identified the climate, the weather, the topography and the soils. Um, and that is mightily important because it will normally form a part of a written question. The wine of origin may or may not. Um, it's not a huge part of your text, but these are wine laws which are all about location, geography, wine of origin. Um, they don't govern really things around dictated grape varieties like in Europe, but they are typically New World, which give you an idea of location. So you can have things like regions. Now, the regions are within the Western Cape. And in fact, Western Cape is a whole area as a WO, a wine of origin. But within the Western Cape, you have the coastal region. Um, so this is the uh, bit I identified earlier, including Schwartland, Durbanville, Constantia, Stellenbosch, Pal. Um, we have the Cape South Coast, which incorporates for you guys Walker Bay. Uh, so that is like Walker Bay, Elgin and Elim areas. And then the Breeder River Valley, which is the inland area beyond the Bolan Mountains. And this is where we find um, more sort of, uh, there's some good production out there actually, but a lot of mass production as well. Um, so let's identify what these wines of origins can be split into. So I just mentioned regions. So an example of regions, are the coastal region that, uh, that we were just mentioning. Okay, so that's an example. So that incorporates Svartland, Pal, Stellenbosch, um, uh, Constantia, Durbanville. Uh, so that is the coastal region. Then they are separated into their districts, such as, uh, let's put that down, e.g. Pal, for instance. Okay, and then separated into wards, often towns and villages, etc. Uh, here, um, like the French Quarter, which is Franschuk. Okay. So, um, so examples there really of the region split into smaller districts, split into smaller wards. And that's quite classic around the world when you have um, more pinpointing identity of the, where your grapes come from. Um, then we have what's called estate wines. Uh, oh, and the example on the left there is Cannoncock, the brilliant Cannoncock. Uh, as it says there, wine of origin, Simonsburg Stellenbosch which is a specific part of Stellenbosch, uh, so that's a W-O. It also says a state wine there on the, um, uh, on the label as well. So estate wines, uh, these must come from a single estate as one would expect, and the grapes must come from that area and must be a contiguous single area as well. They must have facilities at that estate to take those grapes in and produce the wine on the estate, uh, which is quite, quite typical when we think about estate wine. So really these are um, grapes that are owned and controlled by the producer um, and you have therefore full product traceability and authenticity behind those grapes for estate wines. Um, and then it's not bolded, but IPW, Integrated Production of Wine. This is um, like a sustainability program, which is voluntary, um, but it can be identified on the label as well. Um, but they won't ask you about this. It's not the most important for you guys to understand. So um, that's the bit of theory here. We've just gone through South Africa, climate, weather, topography, soils, and then a little bit on the wine laws. Um, let's just work through a um, written question. Now, this is in order to understand really what 
could be asked of you in the dreaded level three examination and how to structure your answers, what you should be identifying are the key words. So this is one question, so we're not gonna go do any more than this, but it's a pretty big one. State and explain, that normally means one mark for stating and then explaining a second mark. Four climatic influences of the Western Cape in South Africa that make grape production possible. That's identifying to you really that it's quite a challenging landscape due to the fact that it's exceedingly hot, so there must be things in place to balance the climate. But first of all, grapes do very well here. Um, vineyards are located between 27 degree and 35 degrees south, ensuring great sunlight and warmth and abundance of it, which means that grape production will be possible in some means, but will need to be moderated. And how is it going to be moderated? It is gonna be moderated by the Benguela current, which comes from the Southern Ocean. So that's heading south up to northerly way and this brings cold air from the Antarctic that balance that heat and that warmth. So that's one of the currents. The next one is the wind which is called the Cape Doctor. Stating Cape Doctor will get you one mark. It's a southeasterly wind that often adds to the Benguela current cooling the areas that it touches first around the coast by a few degrees thus balancing the heat and warmth again. So really so far, location of the vineyards, Benguela current and the Cape Doctor. What else? Well, the last thing was all about the mountain ranges, of course. We're not going to be talking about aspect here um, and we're not gonna be talking about geology because this is climatic influences. So the expansive mountain ranges, and remember you don't need to say the names, you can if you wish, because that will make the examiner go, whoa, that's interesting, this person knows their stuff, but you don't have to. Um, so expansive mountain ranges across the Western Cape are a source of cooler mountain air, in addition to creating cooler high altitude sites and creating shadowed areas and cooler temperatures uh, in those areas. So basically reducing um, the temperatures due to cooling effects. Okay, so that is it for um, the written question um, on there. So uh, we'll do more on the future um, South African sessions. Now, this is the first of three South African videos. Um, session two will be on the white grape varieties of South Africa, and session three will be on the black grape varieties of South Africa. They, um, the, the last one, the black varieties, will only be available on members only content on the winewithjimmy.com e-learning portal, which you should sign up definitely if you are um, looking to do your level three examination. We have over 750 multiple choice questions. We have revision sessions. We have um, over 30 short written answer questions, flashcards, and then ex exclusive member only content including um, advanced access to the videos which are launched on YouTube. So it's very much worth having a look at that e-learning portal. So thank you so much, I've been Jimmy Smith. I hope you have found this video useful and you are feeling more relaxed and prepared for your level three examination. Once again, if you have any comments or questions, please pop them below the, the video on YouTube in the comments section, or get in touch on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Wine with Jimmy. Um, at West London Wine, at South London Wine, other two wine schools, and Stretton Wine House is my wine bar, all in London. Next time we're in London, please come and see us for a class, a glass, or a bottle. Thank you so much. I've been Jimmy Smith. See you soon.